Welcome to Painting with Steve. Today we'll be continuing our series of painting the Touch of Evil miniatures. And today's session we'll be adding those first couple of paints. So let's get painting. When you're adding that first color, you aren't really looking for details, so a big large brush is best because the goal here is to cover your miniature with as much of the paint as you can. Basically, we're putting on the dominant uh, primary color of the miniature. In this case, I'm starting out with green for uh, this investigator. He looks pretty much like his cloak should be green in color. So we're gonna paint him green. Our next miniature I'm feeling really is the doctor and I think his overcoat should be gray in color so that's what we're going to be painting with him. As I mentioned before the goal here is to get some of the primary color on there. Don't worry too much about going outside the lines. You can always come back and touch it up later on. So most of the time, after you have let this paint dry thoroughly, you can just cover it over it no problem. Uh, the key is you definitely do want to make sure your paintbrush hasn't got too much paint on it. Like you notice here, when I first put on the gray, it was too much paint. It was starting to blur the line. All you need to do in that situation is wipe a little bit of the paint off your brush and then just go over it. In this case, you're actually removing some of the paint so you can make sure that you can see the details. Now we're moving on to our Lillian, our lost soul, and I think her primary dress should be white in color. So let's get her painted. There, we're finishing her up. She's coming out pretty good. Uh, once again, uh, to make sure the details aren't uh, blur too much, just take your paintbrush, which is pretty much hardly have any paint on it, and brush it down a bit to get uh, the details to show again. Our next miniature is the Smuggler, and I think for her, a bright red would be a good base color for her. So let's get her painted up. My residents have been really enjoying playing Touch of Evil. Uh, we've taken on Krampus and have won, and we've also have taken on the Nutcracker and didn't quite have so much luck. So there, now our first base coast of our miniatures are on our miniatures. And so let's now take a look and see how they're looking. As you can see, our miniatures are starting to take shape. Their defining primary color is on them. So now let's start and add a secondary color to our miniatures. And I think I'm gonna first start with the doctor and add uh, some white as a contrast to his gray. Uh, that basically is uh, undercoat. I think I'm gonna do is a white and uh, in this case, you notice now I have switched to a much smaller brush because now we're doing more detail work. And now we are worried about staying within the lines and such. Uh, though don't worry too much if you do get a little bit onto where you want to have his gray. We can always come back and touch it up later on once it dries. So in this case, you're looking at, okay, what is the next secondary color that would be good on our miniature? turning to what I like to call our ruffian here or I think he's a treasure hunter or something like that is what he's officially called and I've decided that his primary coat should be red in color and now after you as always important between you switch between colors to make sure you rinse out your brush thoroughly and now we're going to turn to our lost soul Lilia and uh, to contrast her white dress I'm going to give her a black cloak which I think will make a great contrast for her. Mm -hmm. 
And there, she's starting to look pretty good here. I really like the black coat on the white dress. It makes an amazing contrast between the two colors. They literally are the opposites. Um, and you might ask, well, why am I bothering to paint black on black when I've already primary, when I primed the miniature it was black? I find that you still want to paint over areas that you want to be black with black paint because it just gives you a little bit more of a flatter and a better looking uh, paint job. So even though I might have a lot of areas that are black on a miniature, I still paint them over with black. And now we need to finally turn to our last miniature, which is our smuggler. And I noticed that her uh, dress is red, but there's also a smaller part that's a different color. And so I think I'm gonna go with a color that's not quite bright red, a different color. I'm gonna use scarlet here. Uh, it's a uh, closer to an orangey red color and so it will still look like it's part of the dress but will give some contrast and will bring out that detail of a lower layer of her dress and as normal gonna make sure your paintbrush is as clean as it possibly can be I'm really liking how the scarlet is contrasting with the red. They both look like they're complementary colors, but they also show a different detail to the miniature. So let's take a look and see how our miniatures are looking. As you can see, our miniature are really starting to come to life now. Um, they're starting to get some definition and such to them. Our final color that we're going to be adding to our miniature is the flesh tone. And that, if you're dealing with any miniatures that are human in uh, type, uh, when you add the flesh tone, they're really going to start to look alive because now instead of it being black, where the flesh is showing will look like flesh. Uh, obviously, if you want more diversity, you don't always have to use flesh tone. You can use different shades of browns and, uh, and grays and blacks. But in this case, uh, being colonial America, majority of our investigators are going to be Caucasian. So we're going to start with a flesh tone here with our uh, ruffian here. And I'm initially, I was going to paint his hands and I took a, a closer look at his hands. And it looks like he's really wearing gloves. So I've decided to leave them and I will paint them over as gloves. You will see there's a little bit of flesh on one of the hands, but that will can easily be painted over with his glove color. I haven't decided what color it's going to be. Probably black gloves. But we will see that in a future session. Um, this will go fairly fast, painting on the uh, facial uh, flesh tones. On basically the face and the hand are what you're painting. Uh, and I usually find it's better to do these at this stage instead of doing before you do your hair color and such because it's easier to paint the hair and keep it out of the flesh than the flesh to keep out of the hair. And you can cover hair color a lot easier uh, with your browns and blacks and blondes and other colors of hair. So let's see if we can finish this up and get the other one going. And there, now we're finishing up our smuggler. Um, for her, the flesh is really defining it because uh, her dress falls away. You can see quite a bit of her arm in that detail is coming out now that we're coloring it with flesh as well as her face expressions as well. It took me a while to get just the right part of uh, where her neck um, and her shoulders and such were showing above the her dress just the way I wanted. In fact, in many ways, I went a little too much and got a little bit onto the dress. But that's easy to fix. Later on, you can go back and then touch up the dress with some red paint to cover up the flesh. But let's take a look and see how our miniatures are now looking. Oh, there you are, looking pretty good now. You can start to see that the flesh is really bringing some details to them. And I think they're really looking good. Well, that's all for now. Uh, next time we'll be adding some more paint to our miniatures, but for now, happy painting!